Hello and welcome to another video from me, Rough Swordsman, Wargamer. It's part two of my playthrough of Zero Leader from DVG and designed by Chuck Seagert. In the last video, we had a pretty easy time in our first mission dealing with the hostile force and the three planes that flew didn't come off too badly. But before we start day two, just some things I need to uh, put right. The first one of which was that when Tagahashi destroyed the target, he was entitled to get two victories, which I forgot to do. So we've put that right here with Tagahashi. And if a pilot gets five victories, they have a choice. They can add plus one to their air to air or air to ground die rolls. The other thing I just want to clear up, you don't have to pick your squadron randomly. I did, so I could get my extra 12 SO points. And the last thing is to do with the sites and bandits for a campaign. And as you saw last time, I just put the 1941 F4Fs in a cup. And on the other side, of course, they've got the sites. And I did this because of the rules on page 13, which say, each bandit has a year printed on its counter. Each campaign also lists the bandit types present in the campaign. Place all the bandit types listed on the campaign sheet that are of the same year in a cup. You will draw bandits and sites from this cup during missions. However, it was pointed out to me in one of the comments, and thanks for that, by the way, that I should put all 1941 counters in a cup and the comment directed me to Chuck Seagert's videos on this game where he confirms that all in this case 1941 counters go into a cup and this is to equal out the percentages of sites that you can pick it's more fair if you like but this does mean you're going to get other bandit planes in that cup so it will be a bit of a, a faff, because if we don't pull an F4F, we have to discard it. So what I'll do, I'll draw the sights from this now larger selection. And when it comes to drawing the bandits, I'll pause the camera and sort out the F4Fs into another cup and draw them. Of course, when you play, you won't bother. You'll just keep drawing until you get the F4Fs. I know this is having a second printing at the time of videoing, and maybe that rule will be one of the things they clear up. That does mean, of course, we might get some nasty sights from now on. But there we go. Okay, we're on day two, and we've got two victory points so far. So let's go and choose our next targets. So from the last mission, we can now pick two target cards. So what I'll do, Give them another shuffle just to be fair and above board. And while we're here, quick shuffle for the event deck. I'm only doing this because I'm videoing it. Whoop. And I don't trust me either. There we go. Right. Pre-flight. Draw. Target cards. First one is a minor airfield. Four hits. Five planes. Oh dear. One bandit in the target area it looks like. But we'll sort that out in a minute. And the next one, we can pick two. Oh, shore batteries. Three hits, disperse, small, overkill. All right, let's have a look. So here are the two targets. And immediately I can see that uh, there is no secondary keyword here, which means once again, we can only fly one mission. And here we are on the key terms sheet, secondary. In addition to flying the primary mission each day, 
you can select one available target card with a secondary keyword and fly a second mission during the day. So, just the one mission for us again. Let's have a closer look and see which one we're going to do. Shore batteries, three hits, three aircraft. There's going to be uh, a sight at the target and in each approach and a bandit just in the target area. Two VP, Intel moving up one, dispersed, small and overkill, four plus gain two SO points. So if we do four more hits over the three required, we will get two SO points. That's the overkill bit. Dispersed, that means each bomb can only do one hit, regardless of how big it is. And small, we have to take one from our air to ground rolls against the target. So that's not looking good. The minor airfield, five planes, four hits. A bit more in the way of uh, sights and bandits, as you can see. But it's three VP and the recon and intel will move up. And they are soft. Now this one bandit here, on the key terms, draw the indicated number of bandit counters at the start of each turn over the target and place them in the center area. That might be a bit of a pain, but I think we're gonna use this one because of the VPs and the movement of the recon and intel. So we'll pop that there in the target area. And this one goes back on the target deck to be shuffled in, maybe picked at a later date. So we've drawn the target cards and selected the target. Now, determine and place sights. We've got this uh, big pot now of sights. So it says we need one in the target area and two in each approach. Right, here we go. Oh, that looks good. One in the target. Oh, special sight. Let's see what we've got. We've got a rifleman here. And a light machine gun. A special sight. No sight, back in the pot for you. No sight. <laughs> Riflemen, oh, two riflemen, no sight. We have been lucky and a heavy machine gun. Let's just remind ourselves what these numbers are. They are all soft are the sights. The first number seven means that if we throw less than a seven, it's a miss. A seven is a stress. An eight being one below the middle number is a minor damage. A nine would be a damage and plus two stress and a 10 destroyed. But I don't think that's too bad. Let's have a look and see what this special sight will be. So I've got those in another little pot. So this is a target of opportunity. If we destroy that, we treat that just the same way as a sight coming in low, scoring one hit on it, we get a VP. Assigned pilots, five of them. We're gonna need some escorts this time, possibly because of the bandits. We're gonna have two in the target area, one in each approach, and one will be drawn every time we start the over target phase. So what I'll do is I'll now sort out the F4Fs from that pot and put them in a separate one so we can draw the bandits. Of course, you won't do this if you're playing, you'll just draw until you get the right ones. I'll do that and uh, also sort out what pilots are gonna be flying the mission. So here are our five pilots. We've got a couple of zeros and the rest are bombers. Matsuda, our newbie, only needs four. XP to rank up, has the Agile, 
That means he can go evasive without it costing him a stress, which is great. And our other zero pilot, Yamazaki, has the relief skill. And if he destroys three or more sites or bandits during a mission, all the other pilots suffer one less stress. Matsuda doesn't have any modifications for his air-to-air -air roles, but Yamazaki has a plus two. And our bombers, we've got Ishikawa, who has a samurai spirit and a plus one air to ground. Oyama, also with a plus one. And these two are dive bombers. And they both get a plus two added to their air to ground when they do that. And Sawada, samurai spirit and a plus one air to ground, has the level keyword, which means that he can drop his bombs at high altitude, but there is a minus two air to ground die roll modifier. Okay, next thing it says is arm the aircraft. Now, just before we do that, there are also these available to the pilots, the drop tanks, weight of one, and if a pilot keeps that drop tank on the plane for the entire mission, they get one less stress. But as you've seen, all the missions on Wake Island are only one stress. So for escorts, it will affect their maneuverability. So probably won't be using those. There are also torpedoes, which are only used for naval sites, and that will come up on the keyword on the target card. So our escorts aren't having any bombs, but our three bombers, of course, will. Uh, Ishikawa and Oyama can only have 250 and 500 pound bombs. Sawada can have the lot. So what we'll do is we'll give Ishikawa two 500 pound bombs. And two for Oyama. And again, even though this is a soft target, the 250 pound bomb will give a plus one to the die roll when we drop them, but it's uh, a one hit wonder. And as I always say, you'll play this completely different. And the big 1,000 pounder for Sawada. And that's it for the pre-flight phase. We are now into the target bound flight phase and it says draw target bound event card. So that's the top bit. And it's got, if no pilots are shot down this mission, gain two SO points. That'll be handy. So I'm just going to pop that on there. That of course will disappear after the mission. Unlike those two we drew in the last video which I mustn't forget about. Place aircraft and choose altitude. So obviously we're coming in from the east, no sights, and none of the sights have any range. So it really all depends on what bandits we get. So our two zeros are coming in high. Matsuda and Yamazaki. In their zeros coming in high, as are the two dive bombers, Ishikawa and Oyama. They'll be dive bombing over the target and getting a plus two to their die roll. But Sawada, I think, is coming in low with his thousand pounder. Here we go, determine and place. Bandits, there are rather a lot of no bandits in this uh, pot here that we sorted out all the F4Fs. So let's see what we're going to get. We will have one in each approach and two in the center. Oh, there's one. That's a no bandit. Oh, there's another one. Oh, no bandit. Two in the target area. There's another one and no bandit. So let's get rid of those. So three bandits to take care of, plus any 
that are drawn with this one bandit keyword here when we get over the target. So we've got a couple of newbies, minus two air to air and a green minus one. So fingers crossed. Intel air defense adjustment. No, that's still right over on the left hand side. No change. If we get this, the Intel will move one. Draw over target event card, the middle bit. We've got treat shaken pilots as within the OK stress range for this mission, downtime. Nope, all our pilots are OK. Place the turn counter in the one box. Here we go then. Excuse me. First thing we do is to draw a bandit. And this is quite thematic because we're attacking a minor airfield. There are already some planes up in the air. I don't know if they've just taken off or they're about to land, but then they're informed that our Japanese pilots are on their way and they're gonna try and get up another plane each turn. So let's see if they're successful. Yes, they are. Oh, it's an average pilot. Oh no, right. Dive bombers. We don't do the kamikaze. Dive bombers dive to low. No, we're not over the target. Fast pilots attack. We don't have any. There's nothing to attack anyway. Sights and bandits attack. No, they're not in range. Slow pilots attack. As I said, nothing to attack. So we move in. And here's our bombers. And now the bandits will move. So this one will move in. We'll sort out what we're doing with them in a second. Yeah, they're all moving in. That's no good at all. So we'll have Yamazaki with his better air-to-air -air attack this average pilot. And we'll have Matsuda attack this bandit, leaving two of the other bandits who are newbies to attack our bombers. How very dare they? Which ones though are they attacking? One, two, three. Three. One of them is attacking Shikawa and the other one. No, it can't be Ishikawa. He's already got somebody. He's attacking Oyama. Move that for a sec so we can see the sequence of play. We advance the turn counter. We now draw to see if another bandit takes off. It does not. Fast pilots attack, no. So the bandits will attack, there are no sights. So a lot of dogfighting is going to go on in this turn. So we'll need our dogfighting sheet. Let's work from the bottom upwards. Matsuda being attacked by this green pilot has a minus one air to air. So the first thing we've got to do is see which maneuver the bandit is doing. That's a D10 plus his minus one, which turns into a minus. So that's a D10 minus one. A six minus one is a five. We're on this column here, they're neutral. He's doing a yo-yo. So next we've got whether or not he's successful. So it's a D10 again, the two air-to-air -air numbers and our maneuver number, which is taken off. So we've got a, a minus one and Matsuda doesn't have anything but he has a maneuverability of one. So that is taken off. So the bandit is throwing on the yo-yo with a minus two. Oh, two minus two is zero. Oh dear, oh dear. He's lost one position. So this bandit loses one position and of course cannot fire which is good. Next one. 
the one attacking Yamazaki. This is a better pilot average. Zero air to air. What maneuver is he going to do? Well, it's just a straight D10. Seven. Oh, don't like the sound of that. He's no, he's doing a yo-yo again. Success. The two air to air. Our maneuverability. So nothing for the bandits air to air, but we have a plus two and a maneuverability of one. So minus the plus two and minus the plus one, so that's minus three, to see how successful that bandit is. So, seven minus three is four on the yo-yo. He gets a minus one attack. So now it's the attack resolution, D10, the two air to air, and the robustness of our plane. And we're gonna take off a minus one. So, enemy air to air is zero. Our air to air is two, so that's a minus two. We have a robustness though of minus one. So, minus the minus one, that's a plus one. With a minus one on the attack roll. And just to remind you, the three numbers again with bandits is exactly the same as sights. Less than a six is a miss. A six is going to be a stress. A seven being one less than the middle number is a minor damage. Eight is a damage with two stress and nine is good night, Irene. So pop him back there. So what do we say? Nothing for his air to air. Minus two for ours, but a plus one because we're not very robust. And a minus one on the attack. Minus two. Oh, ho, ho. that's a miss. Now then, the ones I'm worried about are these two bombers. So Ishikawa is being attacked by this newbie pilot. Now the problem is we can't fire back because our gun is behind the pilot, so we have to end up either disadvantaged or tailed, otherwise we'll have a free shot at us. But let's see what happens. We're looking to see what maneuver they're doing. So that's a D10 plus their air to air, which is a minus two. So three minus two is a one. They are on the tight turn. How successful are they? That's the two air-to-airs, plus the maneuverability of our aircraft, minus one. So that's a minus two. Their air-to-air -air is zero. And we've got a minus one, so that's a plus one. So it's a minus one. Eight, oh dear, seven. Well, actually, that might be to our advantage. So they get a plus one on our position. We are disadvantaged. So, resolution, but we get a chance to have a pop at them because we're side on to them and our uh, machine gunner can have a go. So I think we just take into account the air to air values. So a minus two becomes a plus two, and Ishikawa's air to air is zero, and we need to throw nine or more. So we've got a plus two. Eight, yes, look at that. Plus two is 10. The dive bomber, Ishikawa, has knocked out this bandit that goes back in the pot, and Ishikawa gets a victory. I've made a note of that on the player log, but we've still got to do this one. This is disengaged and goes back to neutral, of course. So another minus two newbie. They're throwing for their maneuver choice, so it's a minus two on their roll. Seven minus two is five. 
It looks like, yeah, they're doing the yo-yo. Let's see how successful the bandit is. It's the air-to-airs and Oyama's maneuverability. So we've got a plus one, not bad, but a minus one maneuverability. So what happens there? That becomes a minus two. We've got a plus one, so that's another minus one, minus three. Friendly maneuverability is a minus one. That becomes a plus. So that all together is a minus two. To see how successful they are. That's a 10. Minus two is eight. Uh, mind you, <laughs> we do need to be in a different position. They get a plus one attack and a plus one position. So at least we can try and have a pop at them again. So they would do their resolution, but let's see if we can knock them out the sky first. Our air to air is a plus one, as you've just seen. Their air to air is a minus two, so that's a plus two, so that's altogether plus three. We need, again, a nine or more to hit. Plus three, though, this time. No! <laughs> Oh, get in! Oh, I'm knocking the camera. Get in! Our boys are on fire. And Oyama gets a victory. My goodness. Hope I'm doing this right. Let me know if I'm not. This goes back to neutral. Now our fighters can have a go. What are we doing? Matsuda. I think he'll try it in my sights. This tends to be the default uh, manoeuvre that most people use. We don't want him getting out of position with that bandit. <coughs> I've cut in here because I made a complete boo-boo of Matsuda's attack because, as you heard, the dog barked. There was somebody at the door. Paused the video to deal with that. A few minutes later, came back and thought I'd thrown this nine, which was from a previous attack, for Matsuda's maneuver success. So that meant he was going to end up with a plus two attack. So what I've done is I've just set it up again. We're going to go through Matsuda's attack again. Hopefully it's okay. We can carry on the video. If not, it's more work for me reshooting from that point onwards. So let's see how we get on. But I think it's only fair we do that. So in my sights is going to be the maneuver. It's the Maneuverability of Matsuda's plane and the two air-to-airs. Matsuda doesn't have any modifiers for air-to-air, -air, but he does have a one for maneuverability, and the bandit has a minus one for that. So, toting that up, we get a plus two, I think. So, let's see what we get. Eight plus two, <laughs> these dice, they're red hot today, but that gives us a 10, and that would give us anyway our plus two, so, right. So I can breathe a sigh of relief, and we can get straight back to the video. Thank you for your patience. So we resolve the attack. We're going to have uh, nothing on there, but a plus one for their air to air. They are disadvantaged. We are advantaged, so we're going to get a plus one. So that's a plus two, plus the two attack, plus four. And our guns are eight, so we need to throw four or more. Look at that, nine. Well done, Matsuda. He gets a victory as well, and that's back in the pot. Lastly, Yamazaki. They're at neutral. He's going to do an in my sights. So that's our maneuverability, which is a one, and our air to air, which is a two. So that's going to be a plus three, and their air to air is zero. So, yep, yeah, plus three on the in my sights. Nine, to, oh dear, I can't do anything wrong. Twelve, that's another plus two to the die roll. So, friendly air to air is a plus two. Enemy air to air is nothing. We've got a plus two on our die roll. So we get a plus four 
Again, eight or more. Look at that, I can't throw it any lower than a nine. He's gone as well. He gets a victory. So we've attacked, we can now move. So in come our fighters, I'll turn them this way. And our bombers. No bandits to move. But we move the turn counter and we pick another bandit from the cup. And it's a no bandit. So here we go. Dive bombers, dive to low. Fast pilots attack, no. Sights and bandits attack. That can't attack. We might have a go at that in a minute. Let's see if we can destroy this and we've got any bombs left over, we might have a go at this one. So, slow pilots attack. Ishikawa is dropping his two 500 pound bombs. I've got to show you there, we need anything below a seven is a miss. Seven, eight, nine is a hit. A 10 is two hits. He does have a samurai spirit, but I don't think we'll use it. We just hope we throw nice and high. But he does get a plus two to each roll for that uh, dive bombing maneuver. Oh dear, that's no good. That's a miss. That's a three with the plus two. But this one, that's a nine. Oh, only just misses off the two hits but we're off with a hit. Three more to do. Oyama would be next. He's got his two 500 pound bombs as well. He'll get a plus two. Oh, I forgot. Hold on, hold on. Yes, I forgot. He's got a plus one on uh, his air to ground. So that's seven with a plus one is eight plus two for his dive, that's a 10, that's two hits, that's better, there we go. Then he missed that, and the same for Oyama, he's got a, a plus one air to ground as well, and the plus two dive, so plus three. Oh, oh dear, oh dear, that's four hits, that's been destroyed. Six hits. And Sawada is gonna drop a thousand pound bomb on this one. I think we can do that. That needs five or more to get a hit. We only need one hit. So we need to throw five or more. Sawada gets a plus one. We need a five or more. Here we go. <laughs> yeah, that's gone. We get a VP. Well done. So we've done that. We're on the homebound flight phase. So the last event card, bottom bit. Save this card. You may perform a priority R&R &R for no points. Then discard this card. Crikey. We'll put a little bingo chit on that. The Emperor is truly smiling on us. So it's now the debriefing phase. All our pilots can fly back to base and feel very pleased with themselves. This applies, no pilots were shot down, so I'll give the squadron two SO points plus an extra victory point. So we can now get rid of that. 
Recalled mission outcome, victory points, adjust recon and intel counters, and special option points. Well, we've got a couple of option points from that uh, event card and a victory point from that special site. So we get three VPs and both the recon and intel move one to the right. So here we are. We've got nine SO points now because of the two from the event card. We destroyed the target. We got three victory points for the target and one more for that special site. That gives us a total of six. Matsuda got a victory. So did Yamazaki. Ishikawa got two more for being the last bomb, if you like, to destroy the target. And um, Sawada got one for destroying the special site. Whoops, hope you can see that. So there's our target gone. And each one of those is moving to the right. That stays the same. But look, we can now remove one site from the next mission. We can get rid of all the sites back into the pot. Place maintenance needed on aircraft that flew today. Let's get the aircraft up here so we can see them. So there we are, maintenance needed, one for you. Luckily though, no other damage. Add target stress to pilots. Each one will get a stress because of the campaign. So one for you and you. There we are. Pilot stress recovery. Now, look at, <laughs> look at Oyama. He's got two cool. They've all got coolness except poor old uh, Matsuda, our newbie. So that means they can remove stress equal to their um, coolness. So these come off again. There we are. And not only that, our pilots that didn't fly today can have two stress removed plus their coolness. So Nomura is okay. Takahashi though doesn't have any coolness, but we can remove two. And these two pilots can go back on active duty. We'll see what happens to Takahashi next time. Record pilot experience and stress. As I say, I don't record the stress on the player log, but each pilot will get two experience points, one for flying the mission and one for not having any planes destroyed. So Oyama gets two. He needs lots. Sawada, Matsuda, he needs two more. Yamazaki and Ishikawa. But there we are. There's everybody. Another look at that was six victory points. We are dismal still, but it's early days. Oh, I nearly forgot. Allocate maintenance crew. So each maintenance crew can repair two maintenance needed. That's those two. That's those two and this one gets a maintenance crew all to itself. So they work overnight and get all the planes ready for the next day. So we'll put Matsuda over here for a rest. I know he's only got one stress, but he only needs two to be at his limit for okayness. And the others are all tickety-boo. We'll go back on active service, ready.
for the next day. That's the end of day two. Okay, I think we'll leave it there. This is a convenient place to stop. And this has been part two of a playthrough of Zero Leader from DVG, designed by Chuck Seagirt. Having great fun with this. Shame we couldn't do two missions, but we'll see what the next day brings. And I hope you enjoyed that as well. If you did and you haven't done so already, it would be great if you would consider subscribing to the channel. Really does help, believe it or not. Another good thing to help the channel is to push the like button of the video, the thumbs up. And if you want to be informed of other content the channel uploads, then push the bell. Leave a comment. If I've made any little boo-boos, let me know. It's quite difficult trying to keep track of everything, especially with the dogfighting and the minus minuses and the pluses and all that. You know what I'm talking about, maths. So let me know, or just uh, tell me if you're enjoying it, because I love to read them. Thanks as always to my subscribers, thank you very much. And as always, just before I go, a quick reminder, if you wish to support the channel a little bit further, well now you can, you can buy the channel a coffee, and I'll leave a link in the description for that. Or if you wish, you can click on the super thanks button right underneath this video, either of which will be gratefully received and helps to keep the channel ticking along, so thank you. Well, that wasn't too bad. There were a couple of moments during the dogfighting that uh, I thought, oh, hello, but we got away with it. We're back safe at, uh, at the airbase, so we'll see what the next video will bring. So, until then, as always, you take care and goodbye.